I'm Dave Coulter, and I, I, and I can't thank you enough uh, for coming out. The Rochester Public Library on a Thursday afternoon is the latest town hall for New Oakland County Executive David Coulter. Can you talk about what we're doing to help homeless in, in Oakland County? The questions Coulter gets range from deer crashes to financial stability to school safety. I'm going to be a county executive that's willing to work with everybody. No political party has a monopoly on great ideas, and I want to hear from good ideas no matter where they come from. So that's it's been 27 years since there was a new county exec. Coulter was appointed after the death of Elbrooks Patterson in August. The larger-than-life, sometimes controversial, always conservative Republican guided the tone of the county and impacted the region for a generation. Now, residents of a slowly changing Oakland County want to know who Coulter is and what he stands for. You know, I was prepared on some level. I had been an Oakland County Commissioner for eight years, uh, and then I was Mayor of Ferndale for nine years. So I have some public service experience, and I understand how government works. But this is a big job, and, um, you know, going from Ferndale, which is 20,000 people, to Oakland County, which is 1.25 million people, it's a lot of the same issues, but on a much greater magnitude. You really touched on the fact that Brooks Patterson was synonymous with Oakland County mm -hmm. for many years, and, and really his footprint looms large. People yeah. can look now and say, how does your leadership differ, and what direction will that then take Oakland County in? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I have a lot of respect for Brooks Patterson, and he laid a great foundation for Oakland County. And he was an icon. So I've told people, I'm not trying to be Brooks Patterson or the next Brooks Patterson. I can only try to be the best version of myself that I can be. And my particular leadership style is collaborative. I like to, I don't pretend to have all the answers, but I think what I'm good at and what government can be good at is as a convener and bringing the right people together to work on issues, get all the perspectives. So one the first thing besides getting my leadership team in place that I had to do is we had to pass a budget in Oakland County. And it was due in about three weeks after my appointment. So as if that wasn't challenging enough, I laid down the marker that I wanted the budget to be passed unanimously. So we reached out to the Republicans, the Democrats, we made sure everybody's voice was heard. We tried to incorporate what everybody was, was, was thinking and asking about in the budget. And I'm really proud of the fact that by the end of September, we passed a three-year balanced budget unanimously in Oakland County. I think it's interesting that you bring up Washington and the polarization there of the parties because people would look at Oakland County now and say, usually a Republican stronghold. Now you have a Democrat who's the county executive. You have a majority of Democrats of the county commissioners. How does that change the direction of the county? Do you believe that there's any change in the direction now? Well, I do believe there's a change, but it's a change that's been happening. This didn't happen overnight or with my appointment. You know, Governor Whitmer carried Oakland County by 17 points. Uh, Hillary Clinton won Oakland County. So this is a county that's been trending blue for a while now. And as a result, some of those sort of more democratic or progressive policies have begun to be adopted. Um, but certainly with me here now as sort of the figurehead in the county, I think a lot of people's expectations are that it's uh, that it will change, and, and it will, but not in a drastic way. You know, we have a great foundation in Oakland County. We do things, some things really, really well. Uh, financially, we're in a very good place. That three-year balance budget that I mentioned is very important to mm -hmm. me. The bond rating that we have as a county, very important to me that we preserve that. So we're going we're gonna to maintain that and yet build on that in some ways. So, for instance, in the budget that we just passed, uh, we adopted a $15 minimum wage for anybody working for Oakland County. That's, that's, that's a progressive priority. We got safe drinking water stations in all of the high schools and all of the elementary schools across Oakland County because health is a priority for me and, I, and, and safe drinking water is really important. What do you think the perception is of Oakland County? Um, one is that it's a wealthy county, and frankly, it is. That's not just perception. We're, you know, the, we're the wealthiest county in, in Michigan, and in a lot of ways, we're the economic engine of Michigan. There are a lot of corporate headquarters here, um, a lot of industry here that really drives Michigan's economy. So that's uh, both a perception and a reality. Um, I think there has sometimes, from a political perspective, been a perception that we're sometimes been the obstacle to regional progress on some issues that are important to people throughout Southeast Michigan. Some of that's fair, some of it's maybe just perception, but that's a particular area that I've tried to address. Uh, I've tried to be somebody in this position who reaches out across uh, county lines and city lines. All right, speaking about regional cooperation, let's get to something that you differ from your predecessor, and that is on regional transit. Mm -hmm. 
the county voted against regional trans the yeah. last time it was on the ballot. There is word that in January we could see another, some kind of ballot language that would be on in 2020. Yeah. Where do you stand in terms of Oakland County's position on transit, knowing full well that the executive's leadership does drive it? Mm -hmm. We see it in, in Macomb County and we see mm -hmm. it in Wayne County. Yeah. You know, when I first ran for county commissioner back in 2002, this was one of my three key issues. And I, so I've been preaching this for a long time. We're the only metropolitan area in the country that doesn't have some kind of comprehensive transit system. And it hurts us. It hurts us attracting businesses. It hurts us in keeping our young people here after college or after high school uh, because transit is important, uh, both economically to get people to, biz to uh, jobs, to get to the jobs that they need, to keep our young people here, uh, to help our seniors and our people with disabilities get around, I'm a transit advocate. Uh, but as you brought up, in 2016, that plan did not pass. Now, it didn't pass overwhelmingly in Macomb, but some people forget it didn't pass in Oakland either. So one of the first things I said is the plan is more important than the timing of when we do it. So we're working with the leaders in the region to see if we can't get to a plan uh, that the voters would be more comfortable with. I don't want to just dust off the old plan and say now we've got an executive who supports transit, so let's just do that. There were reasons, and I think fairly legitimate reasons why Oakland voters rejected that plan in 2016. So my job is to see if we can't craft a new plan that incorporates some of the concerns that voters had last time and see if we can't get that before them. A couple of things to note here. Coulter just announced a few weeks ago that he is running for the job when his term is up, which caught some people by surprise and makes his agenda more open for scrutiny. And that pits him against fellow Democrat and Oakland County Treasurer Andy Meisner, who's also running and announced that even before Brooks had passed away. And don't forget, there's still a lawsuit filed in Oakland County Circuit Court on behalf of the Republican County Commissioners contesting Coulter's appointment. We will keep an eye on all of that.